Hey everyone, welcome back to the kitchen. Today I had a dinner plan. I was going to try a new recipe with like a loaded baked sweet potato that I had seen on Instagram. Went to grab my sweet potatoes for dinner and they are moldy. So game plan number two. Jill with the Prairie Homestead to the rescue. We're gonna do a cheddar herbed meatloaf instead. This recipe does call for two pounds of meat. I've only taken out one and I do hope that my beef is fatty enough as it calls for both beef and pork. Usually when you add pork to a recipe, um, you're adding it for some of that fat content. But we have everything else and we're in the midst of the pantry challenge so I think we're doing pretty good and we're gonna get going on this. If anybody is looking for uh, the recipe, I will link her cookbook in the description below. It's absolutely amazing. And of course she's got Instagram and YouTube also. Good podcast too. Okay, so we're gonna cut this recipe in half since we have only one of the pounds of meat that it calls for. I like that she's measured her minced onion in a uh, half a cup, so we'll do about a quarter cup of minced onion. Might not need as many of these little onions as I grabbed. Behind you, I have a enameled cast iron pot preheating, as it does call for these minced onions to be slightly cooked, and the garlic, which makes sense to me. And the entire recipe calls for two cloves of garlic. We're certainly not cutting that in half, we're adding both. So it does say in the skillet, we're gonna add our onion, our extra virgin olive oil, and some minced garlic. I'm just gonna peel the garlic here and then put it through my garlic press. Spin you around. Two cloves of garlic. allow this to cook for about six to eight minutes until those onions are translucent, fully cooked. I should have waited a little longer to add the garlic, um, but that'll be okay. Back on this side of the kitchen, we're gonna get everything else that we need for this recipe in a bowl. This includes our pound of ground beef. One large egg. My chickens are finally laying again. These are eggs from our property. This goes for a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs. We're gonna use about half of that. We have homemade uh, breadcrumbs from our homemade sourdough bread. If we don't eat all of our bread during the week, we put it in our dehydrator. and then grind it in a blender instead of letting it go moldy. We got our breadcrumbs. We're gonna get a quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. This was something I had stocked up on at Costco before the pantry challenge. And yes, I'm unloading the dishwasher as I go. So, big hunk of Parmesan from Costco. says about a quarter of a cup. So about as many as those breadcrumbs that we just put in the bowl. The entry challenge strikes again. I am out of both oregano and parsley and I'm shocked that I'm out of parsley because I have dehydrated quite a bit of it in the summer um, and we've used it all already. I have parsley out in the garden um, but we had 20 centimeters of snow yesterday, so it is well and buried and I am not venturing out there. So I found Italian seasoning that I had made. I know this contains some of my um, home dehydrated parsley and some oregano. 
Um, so I'm going to add that in lieu of the parsley and oregano. And I think it's going to be just fine. Um, try to stick to the recipe as much as we can, but this is real life, guys. Step behind you and get some sea salt. Not behind you. We have our first step of our new kitchen, and I can't find anything. <laughs> I think it's going to be a big adjustment, but I'm also excited to have most of the kitchen stuff in the kitchen instead of spread throughout of the house. A lot of you homesteaders will understand that once you start homesteading, you quickly outgrow a modern kitchen and desperately need more space. Now, I know the pepper is behind you. All right, our next ingredient is one and one quarter cups of shredded cheese. You only need half of this for the first. Um, so I'm gonna get just over a half a cup because we are cutting this in half and mix that in with our beef mixture. Also, the Worcestershire sauce, however you say that. Does seem like that's gonna be the end of my bottle. So we are the end of the pantry challenge. Today is January 30th, and we do intend to do another month. To be quite honest, we struggled a lot more this year um, because of our kitchen renovation, and also because uh, we ran out of different things this year. We've used a lot more herbs and spices, um, Worcestershire sauce, and we've definitely eaten a lot differently than we did on our pantry challenge last year. I think that with not having a successful garden season, I definitely didn't have as many things preserved and set aside in the freezer um, as I had in previous years when I did the pantry challenge, so this is definitely proving to be a little bit more difficult for us this year. And because we're having a more difficult pantry challenge, I did buy cheese at the store this week. When I went to get milk, I got cheese as well. Um, and a couple of requested snacks for the people that were here helping us out with flooring. So sometimes you just got to get yourself a little allowances. I think next year maybe I'll set a weekly budget for the grocery store rather than allowances of like certain items um, like yogurt and milk and that might just give us a little bit more wiggle room within the pantry challenge where we're definitely not going to the grocery store but we won't be out of things like cumin for two months when we forget to stock up we'll see we'll see how this next month goes and and how that might affect our planning for next year i have a feeling I'm just going to store a few more spices and herbs. Alright, so we've got a very cheesy mixture for meatloaf. I'm just going to grab my Danish dough whisk and mix this up. I hate putting my hands in raw meat. And this is a new recipe for me. Usually this is not something I would try, um, but like I said, my dinner plan was a fail and <laughs> I do not want tacos again tonight. We had uh, beef fajitas last night with like a, a flank steak that was marinated in a fajita seasoning that we have. Um, and it was really good, but I just want something that has some different flavor profiles. And grab those onions and garlic, they're done now. Probably could have used a lighter pot. benefits of these stainless steel mixing bowls you can't see um, is I can put that hot hot in it and it's not going to melt. I love those cast iron pans but man they are heavy. Okay, now you can see that's more than just cheese. Um, there's meat and egg and onions in there. It's mostly combined. I'm going to go grab myself a rubber glove 
um, so I don't have to touch that and form this into a loaf and get this in the oven. Best thing about the dough whisk is nothing really sticks to it. We got that as a gift for sourdough and I don't think we ever really use it for sourdough. I use it for everything else. So you can see this is kind of forming and staying together. And we've got glass baking dish here that we're going to use tonight. Plop that in there. And make a loaf. Alright, so I'm really proud of how this looks at the moment. I'm going to get this in the oven and I'll see you back for an update in about 45 to 50 minutes. Meatloaf is almost done, so we are going to make a quick salad. We have some lettuce here from our CSA, as well as some carrots that have been in the fridge for way too long, and cucumber that also came in the CSA this week. So we're going to make just a quick salad to go along with the meatloaf. So we're just going to temp our meatloaf. It should be at 165. And it is. So we will just let that rest while we finish our salad. Thanks for joining us for another pantry challenge meal. I hope to catch you on the next video.